number seven. As you can see in this picture, dragons aren't the only thing breathing fire in China. Every year in China's Hunan province, people sit in a shallow pool filled with water and three tons of floating Tabasco chili peppers. And they see who can devour the most of these spicy treats. These daredevils go all out. In 2018, the champion wolfed down a gut-busting 50 peppers in 68 seconds. As you can see here in this picture, some contestants don't fare too well. This man is no doubt thinking that these chilies are gonna be awfully spicy on the way out. If you think that this is weird, next up, we have the rich Chinese that are willing to pay big bucks for panda poo. Number six. It's safe to say that the Chinese have taken their love for pandas a little too far. There's no beating around the bush with this one. The Chinese are losing their minds over panda tea, which is grown using panda poo. It turns out that a panda only digests about a third of the bamboo that it consumes, with the rest exiting through the back door as unprocessed fecal matter. Bamboo is said to contain all sorts of healthy nutrients and antioxidants that play a role in preventing cancer. An Shi, a Sichuan University professor turned entrepreneur, developed a business plan to turn this brown into green. Shi got a patent for his panda poo tea and marketed it as a weight loss aid and an anti-cancer tonic. When it hit the market, it was the world's most expensive tea. It sold at $3,500 for every 50 grams, which boils down to $200 per cup. Holy shit. Number five. It might sound insane, but in China, word play is no laughing matter. In 2014, the Chinese government banned puns on the internet. The measure was officially described as an effort to preserve the country's culture and to prevent the youth from plunging into quote unquote linguistic chaos. More likely, it was an attempt by the government to control what it viewed as dissenting behavior. Chinese characters, words, phrases, and idioms were being slightly modified by the Chinese people in order to bypass online censors, and the government would sometimes be the butt of the joke. So the government banned them all together. Well, the Chinese people can't make puns, but I, America, can. So listen up, Chinese government. Don't be such a red square. Your people love drinking tea, so why not give them liberty? When it comes to government regulations, less is Mao. I could keep going, but I don't want this bit to drag on. Number four. One plantation in China has stayed true to what may be one of the weirdest traditions in the world of tea. In this plantation, the leaves are picked by virgin women who aren't allowed to touch them with anything except their lips. The joke's on the Chinese, because if they're virgins, that probably means that they're doubling down on the blowjobs. The leaves are then dropped into traditional baskets that are nestled between the woman's breasts. According to an ancient Chinese legend, fairies used to pick tea leaves with their lips. Wanting to recreate the legend, the owners of the local plantation put out a job posting with some super specific slash problematic resume requirements. All applicants had to be women with no sexual experience. They couldn't have any visible scars, and they were required to have a bra size of a C cup or higher. The ad caused quite the stir. The locals were upset, claiming that it objectified and disrespected women, which is a understandable conclusion. Number three. Chinese vending machines don't just have one leg up on their American counterparts. They have 10. That's because they're selling live crabs. One crab supplier in Nanjing introduced vending machines into subway stations that display clear plastic boxes containing live crabs. They also include all of the necessary accoutrements, like crab vinegar and two bags of ginger tea. The creatures are kept at a constant temperature of about 41 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't enough to kill the crabs, but it does keep them in a dormant state. These machines are great when you want something savory for your Kit Kat, and salted peanuts just won't do the trick. Number two. Only in China can you make money by canning air. Although to be fair, we do drink 
millions of bottles of water every year in the US, so I don't know if we should be throwing stones on this one. <laughs> Canned air is part environmental statement and part publicity stunt. Chinese millionaire Chan Guanbiao made his fortune in the recycling business, and now he's a well-known philanthropist. He's been selling fresh air in soda cans ever since 2012, and it's been surprisingly profitable. The man literally made profit out of thin air. While it may sound weird, the product was also meant to draw attention to China's horrible air quality. Air pollution in China is so bad that in certain areas of the country, the haze is visible from space. Number one, the powers that be in China have issued a countrywide ban on hip hop. Who could have guessed that a music genre known for speaking out against the system would become illegal in China? Sorry, buddy. It doesn't matter how dope your flow is. China definitely doesn't want your demo. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Here's a rapid fire rundown of some of the bands the government has thrown down. Winnie the Pooh, because people say that the character looks like the Chinese president. <laughs> Pinterest, sorry Chinese people, your board is not getting through that firewall. The Big Bang Theory, the show, not the actual theory. The Chinese government wanted to curb the growing interest in nerd culture. Time travel. Movies and shows containing time travel have been banned. Great Scott. Harrison Ford. Probably because they've seen what Indiana Jones has done to the Germans. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, you'll love the one we did on the hidden secrets of LA. You can find that right here. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.